The flump from the exhaust on the downshift is satisfying. And the surge of torque is as well. Hey crew, I've got the key to that 23 Infiniti Q50 Red Sport. We are going to take it for a drive, but first let's check it out what looks on the inside and outside. Up front, the Red Sport model has a gloss black grille around the chrome Infiniti badge. There's gloss black for the extending front splitters, LED fog lights below the LED turn signals. Those are below the LED projector headlights and DRLs. This one is painted in dynamic sunstone red with beautiful metallic flake on it. I'm bullish on this color. Looks great on this car. The wheels are dark gray painted 19 inches, wrapped in Dunlop all season tires, 245 section front, 265 section rear. Within those wheels are red painted brakes. With the carbon fiber package, we gussy up the door mirror caps. There's dark chrome for the window treatment, but then bright chrome for the door handles. Interesting contrast. Stepping back to look at the profile, there's an elegance to the Q50 silhouette, and I do like the wheel designs. I just think that wheel gap would look nicer lowered. We'll see that in the aftermarket for sure. At the back, again with the carbon fiber package, you've got an accented lip spoiler. There are LED taillights, tinted dark. Below those are two large chrome exhaust outlets. I think the Q50 Red Sport strikes a nice balance between luxury and performance. I want to know what you guys think though. Do you like this exterior better or worse than the Genesis G70? Let me know in the comments. Let's check out that interior. Opening up and looking inside at this gallery white semi aniline leather interior with quilting on the bolsters and red contrast stitching. The rear seats are not heated. White and black contrast inside the cabin. Black leathers all on the doors down to the padded armrest with red contrast stitching. One touch up down windows are here. I like the layered leather on the insert. The matte carbon fiber trim mingling with the genuine aluminum trim. Harder plastics are all the way down low. Stepping inside. Behind my own seat at six feet tall. I don't have abundant knee room back here. The seat back is hard plastics. The foot pockets are on the narrower side. So my thigh support is compromised and headroom isn't much better. So when I'm sitting all the way upright, my head is pressed against the roof. If I sort of relax a little bit, then it's just brushing. I'm just going to give this a towards. There are two air vents, one USB-A and C port. The big drive shaft hump means that it's tough to get into the middle seat. And then this seat itself is raised. So my head is pressed even further against the roof. If you don't have anyone sitting here, there's an armrest that comes down. It's nicely padded. You've got two cup holders. It's just on the lower end as an armrest. Apart from the sumptuous leather seats, there isn't much to get excited about in the second row. I'd like maybe a third zone of climate and at least rear seat heating. Let's check out the front. Door closed noise. Got a decent thud. Sounds a bit thin though. Smart keyless entry for the front two doors. These front seats are indeed heated. They're power adjusting with two position memory, lumbar, and adjustments for the side bolster. Aluminum foot pedals, you get aluminum sill plates, power opening sunroof, Bose Performance Series sound system, power adjusting and power folding door mirrors. Same materials on the front doors as the back. Press this button to pop the trunk lid, although it doesn't actually come up at all just sits there so you get to do it yourself. Inside we find 14 cubic feet of space. It's wide enough in portions to fit at least one, maybe two sets of golf clubs. You can split fold the rear seats by pulling on these two tabs. Give this integrated handle a firm tug to close up that trunk lid. Don't worry that tinny sound is from my license plate cover. In the driver's seat, we'll throw the vehicle in accessory mode. To turn on our screens, we have an itty bitty TFT display between an analog speedo and tachometer. This screen is reconfigurable. 
Then we've got a stacked display setup. This upper screen is not a touchscreen. It's also low resolution. It's in charge of your maps, your camera system, and your wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Below that is a higher resolution screen that is in fact a touchscreen. It's pretty responsive and intuitive, but the stacked setup feels kind of dated. Matte carbon fiber surrounds the screens. You get physical HVAC controls, a physical volume knob, leather wrapping for the gear selector, drive mode selections here, more matte carbon fiber trim, two cup holders, padding for the console. Inside we find one USB-C, one USB-A, and a DC outlet, no wireless smartphone charging, and storage is at a premium in this cabin. Small bit of it there and very small door pockets. There's a wave design to the dashboard here. Red contrast stitching on the leatherette topped dashboard. The steering wheel is leather wrapped, red contrast stitched. The thickness is perfect in the hands. You got these somewhat dinky paddles on the back of the wheel though. Visibility is fairly good. There's sort of a high rise to the back end of the car though. There is standard blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic. The cabin is a mixed bag. I love the feel of the leather. The seats look and are extremely comfortable, but the layout and the technology feels dated. Let's take the Q50 Red Sport for a drive now. All right, let's fire it up. Analog dials click on. TFT gives us an animation, and we hear a healthy thrum from that twin-turbo V6 on startup. Our drive mode will be standard to start. Click in on the mechanical gear selector, pull back and reverse, went too far, does feel good, and bring up oh, a low-resolution camera system. I like the different angles. We got the bird's eye view. We've got, and I did mention this wasn't a touchscreen, but it is in fact a touchscreen. Got the wheel shots, and then a nice wide angle view, but it's all just this low image quality, and you don't have trajectory lines. Click in, pull back to drive. And we'll begin with a turning radius test. Crank that wheel. Succinct. It's a great turning radius. Yeah, I don't I don't love the plasticky feel of this leather though on the wheel. It makes too much noise. Turn signal sound. Innocuous fades into the background. Let's give it a world famous horn test. Just kind of your average Joe horn. Loud enough, but not too loud or not too weird. Some horns just sound weird. Powertrain in the Q50 Red Sports. It's the same as it's been for a few years now. We've got a 3-liter twin-turbocharged V6 that makes 400 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque. It is the VR generation of motors from Infiniti, replacing the VQ generation that was known and loved in the G35 and G37 models. It is connected to a 7-speed automatic gearbox and sends power to your choice of rear-wheel drive, or as this one is equipped, all-wheel drive. That 7-speed rose through those gears nicely. The power delivery, you got to give the twin-turbo setup a second to build up on that boost. Then it's fairly linear. The brakes are eager. So you gotta be sensitive to that pedal. You give it too much with your foot, then they become grabby, but you can modulate it. And then throttle response in standard is gentle.
and we're always hearing that pleasant sounding exhaust. The Q50 Red Sport has an adaptive damper setup that takes bumps well. The impacts are not harsh. Though it does kind of feel like it's always fidgeting. It's unsettled. Now the overall comfort is definitely aided by the fact that these seats are supple and supportive with the adjusting bolsters. You can find just the perfect seating posture and ergonomics for your body type. So the overall around town experience stays pleasant. But I want to see if the Q50 Red Sport is quick. So let's do a real world 0 to 60 test next. For that, I've got my race box set up here. I'll then move into the Sport Plus drive mode and give it a bit of a brake boost on our way out of the hole. Yeah, that was eager. 4.9 seconds to 60. Pretty darn good for real world. Again, not a prime surface. Facing a little bit of an uphill. This is not the best we're going to see out of the Q50 Red Sport. An independent test have seen as quick as the mid four second range. I fully believe it based off of that. The noise is sweet. Perhaps not quite as sonorous as the VQ motors but it has character to it for sure. And the mid-range thrust is potent. You do have to wait a second or two for the gearbox to downshift and for the boost to build. But then it carries you. You are reminded every time you put your foot down that you do indeed have 400 horsepower and a stout 350 pound feet of torque at your disposal. If we are to back off from Sport Plus and go to standard once more, the exhaust drone disappears, but at the higher speeds we get the wind, tire, and road noise that suggests the cabin isn't as well insulated as some of its competitors in this luxury performance segment. It's not loud, but it's, it's present. Let's more properly test the merits of the Q50 Red Sport as a performance vehicle now. So I'll go back to Sport Plus Drive Mode and pull the gear selector over to the left to engage manual mode. I'll then pull on these paddles, which I don't love that they're plastic, but the travel's okay. Downshifts are not sluggish. They're not quick. Upshift takes half a second. After you pull the paddle to engage the next gear. The flump from the exhaust on the downshift is satisfying. And the surge of torque is as well. The power of the Q50 Red Sport will push you back in your seat. You just have to give that gearbox an extra second to shift. As we move into handling now. The Q50 Red Sport controls its body well through curves. It stays composed and agile. The brakes have that nice initial bite and then scrub the speed without giving us too much nose dive to unsettle the rear end. 
in lieu of a limited slipper differential as is kind of traditional for sports sedans, Infiniti opted for a brake-based torque vectoring system. And though I'm not really pushing the car here, off camera I did try it out and found that it worked, you know, just as effectively as an LSD. It mitigates the slip from a tire that doesn't have traction, it doesn't waste the power, and allows you to sort of slingshot out of curves. If there's one thing that draws down the driving experience of the Q50 Red Sport, it's the steering. Specifically, it's Infiniti's decision to use a steer-by-wire system, meaning that this wheel isn't physically connected to anything. It knows how much steering angle to give those tires based on the input on the wheel and on the road conditions. It's using sensors for that. And while that's fine for around town, it cuts off the sensitivity that you have to the steering. I'm just not getting any communication here. And though the steering is light, it's also not quick. That doesn't mean that the Q50 Red Sport isn't fun through corners. It just means it doesn't suck you into the driving experience in the same way that a BMW M340i does. I think it's time to assign a miles per hour word of the day to the 23 Q50 Red Sport. And as we do that, I'll go into the Eco Drive mode. My word of the day for this car is convoluted. And I realize that word sometimes has negative connotations, but I mean the dictionary definition, which is complicated or naughty. It's difficult to nail down this car. It's got things like a traditional layout and dated technology, and then some overly complicated modern things like a steer-by-wire system. The power is great, the exhaust note is awesome, but then it pulls back from that with a less than enthralling and driving experience. It's just, it's like patchwork in certain ways. As we move into competition for the Q50 Red Sport, I wanna mention two things I haven't yet. The fuel economy is 20 MPG in the city, 26 on the highway, and 22 combined. And the top speed is 150 miles per hour. The two vehicles I'm going to match it up against I've already referenced at different points in this video, and that is the BMW M340i and the Genesis G70. The starting price for the Q50 Red Sport, and as I'm saying this, I'm going to engage the adaptive cruise control system with a lane departure warning, no lane keep assist or steering assistance here. The starting figure is 57500 and the vehicle as tested is $62,000, or just under that. That makes it more expensive than the M340i, which starts at 55,000, just under 56,000 actually. It does make more power, the Q50 Red Sport, than the M340i, that makes 385 horsepower. It gets to 60 in 4.1 seconds. That's quicker than the Q50 Red Sport. The fuel economy is better at 26 combined. You could also consider the G70 3.3 turbo all wheel drive, and that one starts at $45,000. It makes 365 horsepower, gets to 60 in 4.7 seconds, and the fuel economy is 21 combined. Of those vehicles, the M340i still bubbles to the surface for me as the most engaging to drive a vehicle. I also think that the exterior styling and the interior comforts and technology are solid in this class. The G70, meanwhile, makes a really strong value play. It's got a stylish-ish exterior. I think this actually looks better on the outside. The interior is contemporary, has good technology. The power is also solid for the segment. The Q50 Red Sport, though, it doesn't really wow me. I love the exterior, I really do, and especially in this color. The interior is comfortable, the seats feel fantastic, the powertrain is stout, and the exhaust note is engaging. 
but then you have the steer by wire system that leaves you wanting and you have the dated layout and technology the compromised rear headroom the lack of a wireless charging pad you just go i don't know if i could justify the price point at least the msrp because from experience buying a q40 i don't know what was it six years ago i still think it's true that if you go into an Infinity dealership looking for one of these vehicles, you'll be able to negotiate yourself a pretty awesome deal out the door. Whereas the M340i and all of the enthusiasm now for the Genesis brand mean that those other two vehicles, I doubt you're gonna get, especially in this market, I doubt you're gonna get as good of a deal. So if you can pick up a Q50 Red Sport for a nice price point, I think you could probably make do with the things that you're losing, unless you're all about the driving experience, in which case only the M340i is going to do. I hope you guys have enjoyed this PV Drive review. If you did, please like, comment, and share the video. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell to get notified, and I'll see you next time.